Astronaut Scott Carpenter prepares to tread the glory road that begins at Cape Canaveral. The fourth U.S. airman to probe outer space and the second to orbit the Earth, he is fitted carefully into his suit, the suit that was to cause him some trouble in flight when the inner temperature rose above normal. As he's suited up, however, there is no sign of anything wrong. It's four hours before scheduled takeoff, and he has jokes to pass with fellow astronauts. He has just finished breakfast, everything from coffee and eggs to steak. He's 20 minutes ahead of schedule as he heads for the van that will carry him to the launching pad. It's just 93 days after the successful fleet time orbit of Colonel Glenn and today's shoot is designed to duplicate that flight, gathering more space data to move the Earth closer to the moon. Aurora 7 stands like a beacon of the future atop the Atlas rocket, as 48 powerful searchlights turn the pre-dawn darkness into day. By 34 a.m., Carpenter steps from the van and into the glare of publicity that will be his for the rest of his life. A haze smothers the cape as the astronaut enters the elevator on Complex 14 for his 11-story ride to the capsule level. Meanwhile, the countdown continues, aiming for a blast off at 8 o'clock. The 1,200-pound Mercury capsule is to be a part of the man himself for the next 11 hours. For three of those hours, he will await the completion of the countdown to zero. There are reporters from behind the Iron Curtain present for the first time, and every nation of the free world is represented. The temperature climbs toward the 90-degree mark as the long wait continues. Haze and fog persist, halting the countdown at times as everyone waits on the weatherman. Then, as 8.45 approaches, the count near zero and... Ignition. Throughout the free world, radios blared, the United States launched its second manned orbital space flight. That terse announcement hardly mirrored the tension and excitement as the Aurora 7 mounts majestically to the heavens. For the first time, a super lens captures the actual separation. Carpenter reports back to control. Three minutes, fuel and oxygen are still steady. Captain is holding 5-8. Power still looks good. My status is good. Uh, Roger, uh, pitch minus, minus two and a half, and you're right on, you're good. Roger, reading you loud and clear, Gus. As Carpenter nears the end of his third orbit and prepares to fire his retro rockets, the drama heightens. The Aurora 7 is tilted about 10 degrees too high, and his descent is too gradual and longer than planned. His path carries him 250 miles beyond the target area. As his capsule undergoes the 3,000 degree heat, his radio is blacked out as expected and Cape Canaveral is out of communication. At the end of four minutes, radio contact should have resumed, but no signals are heard. Is he safe? Did the capsule burn up? The world has no way of knowing that the Aurora 7 is floating safely to Earth, the mission a success. Then, 35 minutes later, faint signals are heard and Carpenter is spotted. Minutes later, Air Force rescue men put into operation a rescue technique that they have practiced for three years for just such an emergency. As they did in drills, they rescue both astronaut and capsule, bring both man and vehicle back with cool efficiency. Three hours after his landing, he was picked up by helicopter and flown to a carrier. Carpenter, the latest of our ambassadors to outer space, a man who has raised still higher the foundation upon which our moon flights will be based. Scott Carpenter, great Scott.